Please be seated. Good evening, Lord Mayor. Good evening, members. Can I advise that the Council that apologies for absence have been received from Councillors Peter Clark, Jane Corbett, Rosie Jolly, Gary Miller, Pauline Walton, Harry Key, and Nick Croft. Are there any other apologies, please? Sorry, I can't hear you. Can I remind those present both for the meeting, for this meeting, that this is a meeting Sorry, held in public? and not a public meeting. I would also like to emphasise that this is a key public meeting and can I therefore request that everyone present, including the public, treat the proceedings accordingly, which will enable the business to be dealt with effectively. The use of social media and filming for reporting proceedings is permitted during council meetings. This does not extend to filming of members of the public and anyone wishing to film the proceedings are also particularly directed to the very sensitive issue of filming children without the express permission of their parents. Can I ask permission of the council to allow the palantipers to transcribe the proceedings on the two large screens in the chamber? Is that agreed? Can I advise members that of the recent death of former Lord Mayor and Councillor Doc Gavin, who represented the Piri Ward from 1987 to 2004, and held the office as a Chairman of the Council from 1988 to 90, and then Lord Mayor from 90 to 91. Doc was also conferred as an honorary alderman on the 7th of September 2005. On behalf of the Council, may I extend to her family its sincere condolences in their sad loss. Also, can I just say that today, two of our Council members, it's actually their birthday, Councillor Rachel O'Byrne and Councillor Mary Aspinall. On behalf of the Council, can I wish them a, a very, very happy birthday. <laughs> No cakes, I think. I've only just been told, but nevertheless, maybe we can uh, arrange some later on. <laughs> can I also say that this is the last meeting of the Council before the annual Council meeting? And uh, I'd like to take the opportunity just to say a few words. It doesn't really seem that long ago that I was being installed as the Lord Mayor. <coughs> And I really can't believe that this is the last full, full council before our AGM. My wife, the Lady Mayoress, and I have really had a fantastic year. It's been a real privilege and honour to represent our wonderful city. It's a memory that we will treasure forever. The highlights of my year are too many to list tonight. But you do see your city in a totally different light. No two days are ever the same. During my year, diversity was the theme that I wanted to make sure that we celebrated in the city and to celebrate our multicultural heritage. And I've been to so many events with uh, many of our ethnic minorities in the city and it has been really wonderful. And it's something that, that I will always cherish. Some of the other highlights, concerts in the Liverpool Cathedral, particularly after the, the Three Queens came here last May. Actually, the Queen Mary, two came back to Liverpool on the, 20, on the 4th of July. And uh, it was the same day that we had uh, Liverpool was challenging for a Guinness World Record of having the most models on a catwalk. And rather than go on Queen Mary 2 for dinner with the captain, I and the Lady Mayoress decided that we wanted to strut our stuff on the catwalk, which we did. And I'm glad to say that Liverpool is now a Guinness World Record holder with 3,651 people who took part 
And what a fabulous day that was. People <coughs> didn't just uh, walk on the catwalk, they actually strutted their stuff. And they really got into the spirit of things. So it was a wonderful day. Other highlights, uh, meeting with the representatives of the armed services. Remember it's Sunday, especially with the weeping window. Meeting veterans, some of our veterans who I've met on many occasions and who always play down their role in their involvement in the war. And you know, they are our real heroes and without them making those sacrifices and those who never came back, you know, we wouldn't be here today. So it's only right and proper that we always remember the sacrifices that they made. Our young people in our city, only last week we uh, had the very first uh, youth awards in the city and some of our young people are really inspirational and uh, it's been a pleasure for me and a privilege to attend many events with our young people. Uh, they are really fantastic and they are our future. Our schools parliament, the European Youth Parliament, it's great to see young people taking an interest in politics and civic life in the city. Really fantastic. Again, all the volunteers who do, do such tremendous work in the city. The big backpack day, I remember that especially where volunteers really, you know, put them from the, like a conveyor belt it was, it started off with an empty bag and by the time it came round it was full of uh, essential uh, winter items to get vulnerable people through the winter. Uh, white Christmas, there was loads of uh, really of charity events that I was really proud to uh, attend and it was just fantastic. It just shows you really how people in this city are very generous. On a personal level, I was able to find out about my, my father's life at sea thanks to Bill Anderson from the Major Navy Association. Thanks to him, I now have a complete record of my father's life at sea, which includes yeah, three merchant navy World War II medals, of which our family is so proud. And I don't think I would have been able to achieve that without the help of uh, Bill Anderson and my role as the Lord Mayor. But the Lord Mayor, the role has many aspects. Apart from meeting and greeting members of the Royal Family, ambassadors, high commissioners, consuls, VIPs, and distinguished guests, opening new businesses, charity and religious services. But apart from that, we've had some really uh, unusual sorts of uh, jobs to do. Uh, not long ago, I was sitting on a horse outside the town hall. I've been driving sheep down near the waterfront. I remember the zip wire challenge. I think I went after the, the chief executive, which was a scary day, wasn't it, the uh, chief executive? But there were also some funny moments, and I can barely remember once at a civic service in the, the cathedral, it was the judges' service, and as we came to the end of the initial start, I quickly realised that there wouldn't be a place for me to sit, and I would have been left standing in the aisle with nowhere to sit. But I was rescued by the wife of the dean, who escorted us to a seat that was available. And only recently, I was in the Adelphi, and uh, at an event with the, it was a women's uh, club, they were meeting for the last time and there must have been about 200 women there and because I had to leave uh, pretty early, there was, uh, you, get, you get sort of processed out and people all stand up and clap and as we were sort of uh, being escorted out, uh, there was that many doors in that big room in the Delphi. The door that we actually opened was the broom closet. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to turn around and walk back again. <laughs> but it was, uh, it's been very really funny and unusual. And of course there's been some somber occasions, you know, the funerals of Silver Black and PC David Phillips. I mean, the really somber occasions. But I think, you know, the city in those sorts of uh, occasions really comes together and we see what the people of this city is all about. I've also nearly, nearly lost the evening jewel. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't my fault, it was just there. Uh, I was at the Adelphi at another dinner. It was an insurance dinner as well. <laughs> I 
an evening due, it just, the pin had come out, but it landed on my lap, so all was safe. But it's being repaired now, I can uh, assure the next uh, Lord Mayor that it's, uh, it's fully repaired and okay. But it's really been a dream job that I have enjoyed so much. I've enjoyed every moment. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you who've uh, given me the opportunity to represent this wonderful, fantastic city. Obviously, I want to say a big thank you to the Lady Mayor, that's who isn't here tonight, but I will do that at the AGM. Uh, a big thank you to all the wonderful team at the Town Hall. They are really brilliant, they go that extra mile, they look after us in every aspect that you could think of. We are looked after. A big thank you to them, it's been absolutely brilliant. A big thank you to all the officers of the Council, to all the Democratic Services, I think. I've been helped in some way to make sure that I can do this uh, job uh, in the best way possible. It's really been a, a fantastic uh, time for me and it's something that I will never ever forget. We have our fantastic buildings, our museums, our art galleries, our music, our football, our sport, the Grand National, music, comedy, theatres, culture, history. But the one thing that gels them all together are its people. They are really truly remarkable and I believe our greatest assets and I want to say a big thank you to them for all the times I've been given a warm welcome and the hospitality wherever we go. It's really uh, fantastic. And the office of Lord Mayor is really held in high esteem right across the city from local people and businesses. It's been absolutely fantastic. So I'd just like to say thank you. It's been a fantastic year. Thank you. Take away 
a special thank you to Anne for all she's done in support of me. Nobody knows how difficult a job it is in terms of the pressure of getting from one function to the next. And you're right to pay tribute to our town hall, but I know behind uh, you, Anne has been a champion and a supporter, and indeed taken on many functions and many roles herself. So again, our, our best wishes to her, and we look forward to working with you over the next couple of weeks. Well. Lord Mayor, um, sounds like you had a fantastic year, and uh, listen to your thoughts. Um, does bring home just how many great community organisations and individuals there are in the community. It's really good to hear and sort of makes you feel very proud to represent the people. So, uh, congratulations on a very successful year. Thanks. Lord Mayor, well, I expect uh, you're going to certainly enjoy the drive home um, this evening as you sort of tick off and you think, right. I don't have to do another council meeting. Um, but I know, as uh, the Mayor has said, you've still got a number of weeks left um, uh, to carry out this wonderful role and for you and the late Mayoress to enjoy. Uh, back on May the 25th, when you became Lord Mayor, I was very struck by the pride on the faces of your family and friends um, at the AGM. And I think you've every reason um, to be proud of the way you've represented our city and they too will share, I hope, in some of that pride. Um, you have done an absolutely magnificent job. I have really enjoyed watching you um, attend events, thinking to myself, oh, wish I'd done that and oh, I'm glad I didn't do that one. Um, but um, absolutely, uh, thoroughly enjoyed watching you and thoroughly enjoyed you representing our city so well and so brilliantly. It has been a real credit. You have been a real credit to the city. And the Lady Mayoress, I'm sorry she's not here today. Um, she's worked so hard alongside you. She's always, whenever I've been at an event, taken the time to, to come and say hello, which is lovely. She's so welcoming. A terrific sense of humour. Um, you must be incredibly proud of her, and I think our city should be really proud to have had such a fantastic Lady Mayoress. Congratulations, Lord Mayor. Enjoy. And at the AGM, when you get a little medal that says Lord Mayor 2015 to 16, you know you can take that home and wear that so many times, knowing that you have done an absolutely magnificent job. Congratulations. I think um, when, when I met you at the, uh, um, one of our local churches, the Mormon Church in the uh, I knew uh, you would excel to the job with your deputy Lord Mayor, and you certainly have. And I think that speech was fun to listen to. It was encouraging to listen to, it was inspiring to listen to. And I congratulate you. It was really nice to meet Anne when she came out to our board. I'd also think it'd be remiss of me not to say, I think you've done some nice work on the charity side. And on a personal basis, I very much appreciate the support given to Mr. Stubbs. A remarkable charity that's adding a lot of value, uh, both to young people, but also for staff and volunteers, which is a local charity I know well. And I, I, it would be wrong if I didn't particularly make mention of that. Um, can I say with a little tongue in cheek, uh, I hope you're so pleased we did really state the role. <laughs> because um, we know in the earlier years, um, people did a, did a degree of morality. We're part of living history, uh, and I mean that in the very best sense. And it's a history and a tradition. This city's done well. It will carry on. And I'm sure uh, we'll predecide your next, uh, our next mayor will carry on with the same enthusiasm and stay stature. You brought the job. Thank you, Tony, on behalf of all Could I just thank everyone for those kind words? It's really, really appreciated. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the council, I would like to thank and offer best wishes to the following retiring councillors. Councillor Mary Aspinall, Councillor Brian Darling, Councillor Claire Blair, Councillor Ruth Hirschfield, Councillor Dan Hughes, Councillor Erica Kent, CBE, Councillor Janet Kent, Councillor Edward Owen, Councillor Colin Strickland and Councillor Martin Cummins. As agreed previously, any councillor who has served in the last two terms of office, at least two terms of office, will be given two minutes to say a few words at their last council meeting.
Can the members concerned please keep their comments to the period of office only? And on that basis, can I call on Councillor Brian Dowling? Thanks, Lord Mayor. The board will be given two minutes to say thanks for all the work that's gone on. And to say it's been an honour to serve as a councillor in Manfield and the city of Liverpool. It took six long, hard years to break into the stronghold of the Lib Dems. And I have to thank Frank Prendergast, Ben Hughes, and Sheila Murphy for that. To say thank to all the officers would take too long. But Jed and the council team of officers are the best in the country. Still, I have to mention Mike Jones' committee, Jan and Ali, our labour officers, for the work they do is invaluable, and they could not be replaced. In the eight years that I've spent as a councillor, it was a good chapter in my life, and I know I've been a good councillor in that field. The changes made there to be seen, and I've been and played my part in this. And there's still <coughs> many things to do. In those eight years, I met some really genuine people from this chamber, and some not so genuine. But most, most I could call friends, and to clear the air, as most know, I have not resigned, I was deselected. But intend to stay in the political arena and assist where needed. I joined the annual campaign, but first to get Joe elected as Metro Mayor, seeing Kennedy, Police Commissioner. And we'll be waiting on the EU. And I'll be back. Okay, thanks. by any stretch of the imagination, but I've been around for some time. Um, I started uh, on the council under the old system um, of committees. Uh, I was an opposition spokesperson and for a period of time chair of the housing committee. I've been an area committee chair, a select committee chair for a short time, uh, a cabinet member. Uh, never held the job that I never wanted, uh, which was being the leader of a group, although I do find myself a deputy leader, so <laughs> who'd have thought it? <laughs> Perhaps there are some advantages of being uh, shoved to the back of the council chamber, and of course I've held the best job of all, which was being the Lord Mayor of the city, and so I feel it's an appropriate time to go, really. Uh, lots of changes over those 23 years, started off by handwriting a letter about street lighting to the city engineer, whereas now this morning you do emails to street scene. Um, so lots of changes, but probably the same complaints. Um, changes obviously in who runs the council. I, and believe it or not, I am not bitter, angry and twisted about being one of two people. That's democracy, isn't it? And you put your neck on the chopping block when you stand for the council and you can expect <coughs> for it to be swiped at. I will say, however, that I have seen many, many very, very good councillors of all political persuasions lose their seats, not because they were not good councillors, but because that was the way the political wind blew at a time. And I've also seen um, members um, remain elected who perhaps weren't the best of elected members from all political parties. And I think it behoves us to always bear that in mind. I'm extremely proud to have worked alongside many, many of you and many, many of my former colleagues um, and those of us who actually sit and work hard for Liverpool, which goes beyond um, poss possibly uh, some of our political beliefs. Um, I've been very proud to have been honoured for public service. I've been incredibly proud to have been Lord Mayor, but I've been most proud to have been able to serve residents in Liverpool in two wards, one of the most deprived wards in the city and one of the most affluent wards in the city. I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank all those can-do officers, the ones who solve your problems, not the ones who tell you what a big problem it is. Uh, they are amazing. Those officers too who, when I did hold some levers of power, actually gave me not the answer I wanted to hear, but the right answer. 
and who actually continue to give me the right answer and some very good advice. I'd like to thank colleagues uh, where support has been mutual, regardless of what our policies have been. And of course, I'd like to thank the residents who elected me. Uh, legacy. I think it's always nice after some time on the council to leave a legacy behind. And I'm very pleased that the motion that uh, Councillor Owen and I are putting forward, or have put forward, is going through unopposed. It was something I wanted to leave behind, um, a job for you all to do for our young carers in the city. Um, I'd like to also feel that uh, we develop some mutual respect for all, um, we develop an enhanced, say, shall I say, because it is there for all of us, that we have respect for those councillors. We don't count the meetings they don't go to. I have never known a councillor of any particular persuasion who has sat at home saying, I can't be bothered to turn up. I think we, should, we need to recognise amongst each other how good we all are and look at the good, look at the good things that we do and pat ourselves on the back uh, where, we sh where we're able. And I also would like to feel that the needs of residents are paramount and ward councillors should be recognised as, bringing, uh, as being the first port of call for advice and knowledge for all our partners and I will continue to shout for that because I sometimes think that when we have a big issue going on in a ward, sometimes ward councillors are the last people who get asked by the police, by partners, by health. So I think I'd like to feel that um, people remembered that we are there. Thank you for letting me and giving me this last opportunity to address you. I genuinely, genuinely wish you all well. You may not believe it, but I do, for the future. Thank you for everything that you do to serve all of us who live in this wonderful city. Thank you, Lord. Precepts or limitation of council tax and precepts. 
Secondly, any recommendation, resolution, or other decision which might affect the making of such a calculation. And thirdly, administration or enforcement matters in relation to council tax itself. Are there any such declarations, please? The minutes of the last meeting. Are the minutes of the extraordinary City Council meeting and City Council meeting held on the 13th of January 2016 agreed? <laughs> so I stand before you this afternoon, not only as a proud young citizen of this incredible city, but as a representative from an exclusive and legacy forging group of young people, and that is Liverpool Schools Parliament. And as you know, Liverpool Schools Parliament is the only youth-based constitution of its kind in the UK, having been established in 2001. So Schools Parliament has evolved over the years, providing amazing facilities, opportunities and resources for young people in Liverpool, allowing them to become involved in city-wide, nationwide and European-wide diplomacy. Schools Parliament has guided younger people to find their inner voice and their inner passion. Young people, younger people have their means to elicit their concerns, issues and suggestions to Liverpool City Council, proving to the younger people that they have a place in politics and they have the right to be politically active, a crucial focal point for young people campaigning to them. But I digress. Let me talk a little bit more about diversity. So my speech this afternoon is predicated on a report that was developed by Liverpool Schools Parliament, the Diversity Group earlier this year. The report is a comprehensive collaboration of minutes focusing on a plethora of issues that they feel affects them in today's society. To me as a young person, what pervades from this report is passion, determination and dedication to have their voices heard. There are several areas that this report covers such as education, community cohesion, social integration, transport, regeneration and many more. And one of the points that had an impact on me as a young person were the issues that were raised regarding education. So here are some of the highlights. So all students have an access to a high standard of education, equality and diversity on schools curriculum and further integration of employment and general life skills. However, one of the profound areas of the report is the suggestion of further integration of young people in politics and a focus on unbiased foundational political <coughs> education. This is something that myself I am extremely passionate about and to see that other young people have such passion for developing their own integration in politics, it's just it's astounding. It really is. So one thing that I am sure that you will all agree with me is how amazing it is to see their dedication and commitment to equality for all, whether that they have a different colour of skin, whether they are born elsewhere or whether they have a different sexuality. We are all the same and we are fighting for all around equality. Over the next few meetings, Schools Parliament will engage in roundtable discussions, mainly regarding <coughs> education that have ensued from Ofsted's latest comments, and will also be holding a multitude of events in the lead up to the European referendum. Another example of Schools Parliament's fantastic work with Liverpool's young people. 
Council. We ask that you take the report compiled by Schools Parliament and take on board the views of Liverpool's young people when driving Liverpool forward with success. The voices of Liverpool's young people have been heard and we would like to play a part in the development of our city. Where am I? Mayor Anderson, you have valued the contributions of Schools Parliament over the recent years and we hope that you as a council will continue to endorse and do so. I'd like to thank you for listening to my speech. It's been an honour to stand before you and I'd like to leave you with this one phrase. I am Liverpool, you are Liverpool, together we are Liverpool. Mayor Anderson, would you like to respond? No, I think it, Jake said everything and of course we will continue to work with the Schools Parliament. We value the Schools Parliament and I look forward to engaging in some of those debates along with Cabinet members over the next couple of weeks. Lord Mayor, the second statement was received from Sue Carmichael in relation to the Liverability Service. Could I invite Sue to address the Council? Right. Um, Lord Mayor, Mayor Anderson, elected members, thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the newly formed Livability Action Group. We have a petition with over 550 signatures which I'll hand over now. <clears throat> we very much welcome the great achievements for a city under your leadership and we also understand the impact of nationally imposed cutbacks on the city's finances. Our action group was formed last Thursday and over 200 attended. We are all deeply shocked by the summary destruction of this award-winning NHS-led, nurse-led service and there's no consultation about options. It was all done completely by stealth from our point of view. We believe it's an ill-considered decision and it's halfway through Liverpool's decade of health and well-being. The Liverability Service is 15 years old and it's for the physical and mental health and well-being of people over 50, but most are in their 60s to 90s, only about 10% are in their 50s. The 1,500 registered members, there are 500 users each week with 24 brilliant volunteers who help. <coughs> There are about 20 different sessions, including chair-based one and ones for those with dementia and their carers. Plans are already in place to roll the scheme out elsewhere because we know how important it is. Most users have acute or chronic conditions or mobility issues, or like myself, had had major surgery and chemotherapy and livability has been part of our recovery. Many live alone or are housebound carers. The 24 volunteers are critical to the service's success. They are welcoming, they, they support the staff, they make drinks in the cafe and arrange social events and trips. There is a 50 plus charity which also fundraise raises alongside. Livability is much more than exercise. It's an informal village hub where we meet different people on different days, thereby extending our social contact, as well as getting physically healthy. The social aspect is crucial. It's won many awards, deservedly, been on national TV, and even been visited by the Department of Health. The proposed annihilation will be a cruel blow. Many say livability is a lifeline for them. We've just heard earlier on today there is a surprise announcement that there will be a new 50 plus exercise programme being, being city-wide, that is most welcome. But this instant replacement cannot reinvent livability. The nurse-led service, mainly for those in their 60s to 90s, it's a unique city health and well-being asset. We must save it. The 15 years worth of staff, volunteer and user experience is available to build on. Livability certainly ain't broke, broke, so don't fix it by killing it off. 
Mayor Anderson, please abandon this hasty and cruel decision done in such an, a surprisingly underhand way without consultation. Livability's experience and success is there to use. Let's jointly find an intelligent way to do this. Keep livability and roll it out across the city. It's really magic. Thank you. Mayor Anderson, would you like to respond? Well, Lord Mayor, I, I just want to make one comment, and then if it's, uh, if it's okay with, uh, with you, is just hand over to the Cabinet member who can explain uh, what we're doing and why this, this decision has been made. But we're more than happy, I've been to uh, the livability scheme, um, and I'm more than happy to, to meet with uh, people that are using the scheme to explain why we're doing what we're doing. We've lost uh, a huge amount of funding, uh, and this is a service that we believe will be fit for purpose and ready to replace the existing one. But as I said, I'll let uh, Councillor Gladden uh, explain a little bit more. Um, can I first of all thank you for the amazing campaign that you've got together in such a small amount of time. You know, one of the sadnesses as the Cabinet Member for Adult Social Care is watching over a six year period um, cuts happen to the service and very few people have actually complained about it. So I honour the fact that you care so much about your service that you've come out to uh, campaign for it. So thank you for doing that. Um, lots of people think that public health do nice warning things like you know, <coughs> ensuring that you eat salad and not too much sugar and don't eat cake and things like that. But I think these cuts have proved, the cuts to public health have proved, that actually they do really important services such as the livability <coughs> services, such as um, looking after people who are homeless, rough sleepers and those with drug and addiction problems. And naturally, as an authority, we have to take care of those who are most vulnerable. That's not to say that you aren't, of course. But we've had 2.9 million pounds cuts within this financial year, and next year we've got a further cut of 7 million pounds just to the public health budget. They are government cuts, they are not imposed by us, they are cuts directly to the public health service. And what we've decided to do, what we have done, is we've been looking for some time now at um, a physical activity strategy that will be announced later this year. But we are running this three, three centres across the city. Um, I, I don't know where you've been looking to roll this out across the city. I visited Liverability three years ago. I've been trying to negotiate, and my officers have, to try and get the Liverability model, because we value it, rolled out across the city. That's not happened. And I, can't, I don't want a service that just operates in Austin and Rawlinson. I want it where people in the north of the city and the centre of the city can benefit from it too, because I think it's really important. So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to ask you how you think we can do that for the rest of the city. This won't be excluding you, we will include your knowledge and your experience in how 